All right. So, um, yeah, like I was just saying, uh, I guess, like, it's not, like you said, this is our last part of the curriculum. Um, but uh, we're going to continue into NLP, deep, you know, deep learning for NLP. Um, I think I mentioned last time um, when we were talking about, um, sorry, um, like embeddings, uh, we actually, I meant, I think I mentioned that we will go into recurrent neural networks. And that's what kind of what we're doing. And recurrent neural networks or RNNs um, basically um, are a way to structure, um, like, how do I say this? Is that it's to put something in that, like, will come over time. And so this is where, like, it kind of makes a lot of sense for natural language processing because, you know, the words you say before or possibly even after um, can matter to the meaning of the, of, um, of what you're trying to say or what you're trying to convey. And um, so RNNs are really useful. And then we'll actually talk about um, some ways that, like, uh, some other, like, other extensions to RNNs, which are like things like, you know, LSTMs and GRUs, uh, GRU. Um, and then I think we'll also mention just very briefly um, uh, bidirectional RNNs, um, sequence models, which basically just means that um, you're not looking at just for the past stuff, but also in the future stuff. So if you can't put like a theme around this today, like what all of these things mean, uh, they're basically keeping in mind of some previous state, um, some kind of memory of some sort and keeping that in mind versus our neural network. Um, if you pass in one thing, uh, this one time kind of deal, um, it doesn't, in a sense, have that memory, um, and we'll talk a little bit about what that means and stuff, okay? So, um, I'm actually, today I'm going to be a little different because um, <laughs> there's so much for me. Uh, I was thinking, like, oh, let me usually put together, like, a little notebook and such um, to have it, like, more concise. I think that there's actually a couple resources that you have available that actually do a better job than I probably could do uh, putting together. So, I'm actually just going to reference those. I'm going to walk through them together. Um, so just know it's a little different from my typical kind of deal. So let me go ahead and start sharing my screen. Okay. And you think I'd be able to find this quicker now? Okay. All right. I would love to like average the amount of time it takes me to find the thing every single time. All right. So. Um, is actually directly from the curriculum itself. So um, if you looked at if you looked at the first um, lesson or second lesson um, in the curriculum, you'll see this one. Uh, this is just basically the get up part. So um, one basically we're approaching. You know, we call it sequence models. Um, a lot of times it's just called recurrent neural networks. Um, but just know sequence models and recurrent neural networks are basically interchangeable, uh, more or less. Um, and essentially, uh, we're going to kind of be. We're going to like build on top of what we already know about neural networks and basically um, just go wild with it, in my opinion. Um, it's kind of crazy what all the things we can do. So um, the main thing that you should know, sorry, I'm going to turn off my notification so it doesn't bother me, um, is that a sequence model basically just, like I said, takes some kind of memory um, and puts it in um, as part of its network and actually output. So this kind of makes sense, hopefully, is that like if you have some kind of sequence of um, things, especially for language, um, can be really useful. But it can also be useful for a lot of other things, for example, like the stock market, where like previous prices, points, you know, and uh, sales and stuff like this would probably um, have a strong effect on what future parts are. And you can actually do this then uh, thinking about sequence models for time series um, um, data and stuff like that. So you can see here, like, you know, um, it's a little visual right here, basically. And the idea here is like, you know, we represent this whole recurrent neural network as this big old box. All right, and basically we just keep feeding the memory. So like as we put in each word, so like fun, it feeds into here, um, puts an output, but then we'll keep some of that information, that fun, and feed it in for the next word. So you can basically have this keep going through over and over. And so um, even if you put the same word over and over, so let's say you put fun the first time and it feeds through and you get some numbers, um, some vector here, and then you put fun in the second time, well, there is some memory in here. And so this will actually be a slightly different um, output. And that's the idea of the um, RNN, really, is that we're trying to keep in mind of things that we've seen in the past. Um, and th because this is actually bring up different ways that we'll actually approach um, these kind of sequence models. Okay. So, um, like I said, like there's a few use cases. Um, you think like mo pretty much all of like language can be done with like um, RNNs. Those are kind of like the most um, go to. So, like if you're ever trying to predict, um, like what's it called, like um, 
I'm trying to think of a good example of this, but like if you're producing a word at a time, right, you can produce words, but you want those words to be produced in a certain order and certain like connections and stuff like that. So you can't just produce words like randomly. There's some ways you can do this, um, like without going through a neural network, like a Markov chain. Um, but uh, for recurrent neural networks, basically you're taking in information and outputting out that part and remembering what you had previously. So you can actually generate a sequence of things. Um, note that this is not just for text classification. I think it shows down here, maybe not, but um, not just text classification, but also audio. Audio is probably like very, you know, in a sense like time series is that you can't go back in the sense you're not hearing all the audio at once, you know, you're speaking different phonemes at a time and those parts can affect each other. Okay, so again, those are some of the other use cases. Um, there's some other interesting sense like sequence to sequence models, which is a great example. I think this is the one from Google. Maybe it's not the one from Google, but um, basically the idea here is that it watched people draw and the way they draw. And basically um, by drawing one part of this, um, you know, I think this is like a fly in this case. Um, this on the right here is the, the algorithm basically trying to predict what else they will draw, like what would be the next thing. So um, this is kind of an interesting kind of idea uh, that you can actually uh, start off with one thing and it produces other stuff. There was something recently where um, a group had trained, you know, they used a bunch of different methods, but um, they trained um, on Reddit comments and basically um, you could start, I think it was like less than a sentence, like you just typed a few words and then the algorithm, uh, the the machine learning algorithm would basically produce a sequence of like of words basically creating the rest of like the paragraph so you would start it off with something like basically like a seed like a random seed and it would start writing the rest of whatever it is uh, i was really interesting um paper that kind of showed that how how good it can actually be um, and they did some pretty state-of-the-art stuff um but that's the kind of idea of sequence to sequence models okay and you can see here um there's other ways you can do this for picks to picks is like uh, really, um, not famous one, but like really used one. So anyway, that's just like the use cases for an RNN. So um, any questions on like when or where you can use it? Okay, cool. So um, this will bring us into recurrent uh, neural networks. And so I um, lead to this article right here. Um, I, I actually think our um, curriculum references this one. So, um, but just know this is the actual article itself. And so I'm actually gonna walk through this article. He also has a video in here that explains it, but I'm kind of gonna like point out certain parts. So um, I think this is like, honestly, like I haven't seen a visual this great. Um, I thought that's why I was like, oh, I, I'm like, I'm not even gonna try to do this because um, I think he does a really great job explaining this. So um, again, so we send RNs or sequence of models. And so you can kind of imagine like he has these different you know, positions of like balls. These are different points. You can think of like each word, for example. And so I think he shows an example. Oh, this right here is um, audio spectrum. So like I said, audio is really, you know, um, time dependent, right? Basically those different sounds all play off of each other. So um, I think he says specifically, he actually works in the, um, digital um, voice assistant space. So um, again, like these things are really useful for like, like Google Homes, um, it's called Amazon Echoes and all that stuff. Um, because basically it's trying to find, you know, the meaning out of the, you know, this huge block of uh, sound. So uh, he kind of gives an example of like, you know, if you say the ABCs, right, you can probably say it really quickly in your head, like really fast, right? Since you probably have it memorized since you were a kid. But if you go and try to say it backwards, like saying it backwards, unless you practice it, um, for sure, the record I did, but um, uh, saying it backwards is actually not super easy. And it's because really what happens is that you have kind of memorized where the sequence of words are. So he gives you an example, like, oh, okay, start with the letter F, you know, and you start with the letter F. Well, if you start with the letter F, you know, how would you proceed next? Like, it might be tough at first trying to go from there, but after a while, you probably actually say F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, L, P. Like, you can go through it very quickly. Once you know that initial part, you can go that sequence. And basically that's your brain learning these sequence of patterns. And that's really what we're doing with recurrent neural network. So, um, <clears throat> so recurrent neural network, um, I actually don't like, uh, I, this is the one part like, I think I want to kind of go a little bit further. So um, with recurrent neural network, um, you can think of it, I'm getting my annotation tool here. Okay. Is that um, we had our, our neural network. So we had like our different nodes, we had maybe some hidden layers, right? I mean, our output layers, right? And then these all connect in different ways, right? I'm not going to draw all the connections, but just to give you the idea. Okay. 
So like you would have a neural network. So a recurrent neural network, um, actually it's pretty similar in that sense. I mean, it makes sense we are saying a neural network. Um, the first thing is that we tend to go left and right. We actually write it up to um, top bottom, or sorry, bottom top. So like going from left to right, instead we go um, from the bottom to the top. And that's just the way um, recurrent networks are usually drawn just because I think, I think it's because there's probably a lot more information. So if you drew like a, recur um, a neural network on its side like this, okay, so this is like our input layer, and then we might have like our hidden layers, okay? And then let's say we have our output out here. So these are like our classification, right? Um, and then, you know, obviously we have all these connections and such like this, okay? And so if I just go ahead and call this, like I'll give it some um, mathematical terms. So let's say I have this, for example, as like my x vector, right? So like, you know, like this x1, x2, x3, all the way through xn. And then we have something like our hidden part right here. And then we also have our output. So we usually call this y, right? Okay. And usually we don't really say much about the hidden network. Um, in this case, we're actually going to call it something. Uh, this is essentially it's its state. So we'll call that just s. And we'll put it s sub t. And the reason why we put s sub t is that we'll actually use this for time. So we'll actually input this vector. So you can think of this one vector as like a single word, right? So we can, like I saw in embeddings, we can take a word and put it as one vector. And so you can say, okay, we take the first word of this sequence and put it through here, go through the, you know, hidden um, network and then put out output for Y, right? And that will tell us, you know, what the word is, or whatever we're trying to look at, right? And then what happens though, for a recurrent neural network, we'll actually pass the, um, what's it called? We'll actually pass the output. So I'm actually gonna use a different color just to kind of emphasize it's different. So I'll use blue here. So we can actually pass this information into another set of nodes, essentially. Okay. And then these parts can actually connect, and I'll actually use one different color just to really emphasize that it is different. Um, I'll just use gray. Okay. So these parts will then connect, you know, and they, you, they would connect in all the different ways. I just don't want to draw all those different lines. And so what this is right here, this will actually be the next um, state. So this would be like S T plus one. Okay. So what would happen here is that essentially we're taking that state and then we're going to reapply it there. So what does it look like? Let's say we go in the middle of like our um, sentence. And so it's been going on for a while. And so we would have our um, input right here for X, our, our word. And then we also have, let's say, the previous word with some weights, essentially this ST plus one. So let's say uh, we said like the first word or the second word is dog and the first word was the. This would have some information about the. And then we have dog here. Um, and we put basically dog through, we push these through the, um, the weight, sorry. We basically feed forward, right? We feed forward those weights through here. We get to this hidden layer, but we also feed forward that um, previous state, that um, thing that for like the, and we put those weights into here and that will affect this hidden layer. And then those parts will be passed forward to find Y. But also it won't just get passed forward to Y here. It will also get passed forward to ST plus two for the next word. So if the dog is, you know, the next word, that basically would have much more information about um, dog or the previous word plus the next word, which should be is here. And it would basically keep going in this cycle. So you can now see this is gonna be really, really like messy. So we'll tend to write like this whole, like, you know, um, if I just did the simple neural network, this would be our simple neural network without any um, state, any hidden layers, right? And so you can see right there, this would be this guy right here. But um, what we tend to do for our ends, because there's a lot of kind of like looping back around and stuff like that, we'll actually draw it out like this. So you can kind of see is that we have our input vector here. And then basically we would have go through this hidden layer, but this hidden layer would um, then produce other values and then also put on output. And we just keep going around and around like this as we put in new vectors on that red dot there going, you know, new word, new word, new word, new word. Uh, so what's kind of interesting as you might catch is that this uh, little um, state going back and forth, back and forth, it's not just going to code just the last previous information. It's also in a lot of ways conveying some older information too. So it might, in a sense, like say, okay, like, well, since this is affected from the previous word, well, then when it comes to it again, it's going to affect it not just like the previous word, but the previous, previous word. And basically some of that information's in there. And so this is the idea that we're keeping some kind of form of memory going through here. And you can see here, there's a little nice, um, what's it called, a uh, nice little animation here of showing how this information goes through. If you also track like 
information going through the like the red ball it'd be going to the red ball and then once that red ball hits then they would separate them out and go forward and kind of going around and around so basically this is the way it kind of like recycles this information this is how we kind of keep um a memory and this is the really basic part of a simple rnm okay um you have any questions um asad anything cool all right so uh so one thing, this is called a folded model, um, which I don't think he actually talks about. But just know that this is like a folded model, which is usually like what we like draw in RNNs because RNNs are actually really complicated to think about it. In reality, what this would look like, um, so like if I drew this out, let's say this is our hidden layer right here. And we have our point, our output Y, and our input X, right? Okay, this would be our folded model, just like this. Um, our unfolded model, which basically shows each part, Basically, what we would have is a weight coming in, our hidden layer, and we also have our x. So this is our first. This is our first, like you know, word. This would be our second word. Okay. So I'll, just, I'll put like x1, x2, but just know these are each vectors. Okay. And this would be a new word here. Okay. And these are all getting input. And what would happen is if we put the first word in here, we have some extra information. Let's say a previous state of some sort, and then we have an output y, right? And then what happens in the next one, we actually pass this information, st plus one, right, into this layer. And what would happen now is that this x2 comes in, this new state comes in, and we have a new output, say y2. And then the same thing happens going forward. Basically, we have this new state information, st, st, was it? ST uh, plus two. And then we have x3 come through here, and then it would be output to y3. And this right here is considered the unfolded model. Okay, so all of this right here, and this could go on, you know, however long you want. Um, but usually to make it really simple, because you could imagine just drawing this out every single time, we'll usually just draw it like this, which you can kind of see represents the same stuff. It's just that it's saying, oh, this, it's implied that you will have multiple words or, you know, inputs essentially going in as a sequence. Okay, cool. Uh, sound good so far? Okay, no questions? All right, cool. So, yes. Um, so this is kind of an interesting part is that, um, and let's see, I actually don't remember if he talks about the article. Okay. So actually one, before I go into this, is that you can actually do some really interesting things um, with that kind of structure. So I probably shouldn't have deleted the whole thing. Let's see if I can redo it. Nope. Okay. <laughs> I was thinking if I could redo it, but no. Um, so one thing to note is that like we have, for example, I showed like different um, output vectors, right? And so you could have like, you know, for each one, to put out an output. So you can say like, what's the next word, for example, right? Um, or something about that information. For example, these could be like phonemes. And uh, phonemes, if I don't know if I ever actually explained that. Um, those are like the different sounds you have, like pa, you know, ta. Like those are not words by themselves, but they're sounds that could maybe like be input into here. So you can imagine each of these X as like phonemes or something. Um, and then you could have like the Y part being like, oh, you know, what, what letter is it? Or what is it likely to be? Okay, um, so you could have a different output each time. You can also have um, just one output at the very end here, um, and this would be your Y. And this would be closer to like something like um, uh, sentiment analysis. Is that your sentiment analysis basically uh, saying like, you know is it a positive thing? Is it a negative thing? Uh, this would be basically your you know how positive it is or how negative it is or whatever you're trying to look for. So you can actually have just one output. You can also have like um, something called a a time, a time series, let's say, for example, you're predicting like stock market, okay, you could basically have all the previous data filled in from before, right? And like, you can have all that information filled in through, you don't need an output, because basically, you're just feeding in essentially the old stuff. And then over here, you essentially have new predictions. So your next new predicted stock price for the next day would be this x3, and you get this y part here. And then you would go, it's like, okay, well, using what I predicted, let's go forward to the you know, from two days from now. Well, that would use not just the old data, but also this new data point that you predicted, and you would get now a new point here. So this would be also um, for like a time series, like if you wanted to predict, um, what's it called, like the stock market or something. So know that these RNNs are really um, structural, like you can change them up a little bit. And there's another part, which I'm not even gonna draw it like this way because it's just too complicated. Um, you can have a stacked, um, RNN. So you can have it like, you know, our X, and then our folded model like this, right? And then you could also have another output. So you can say, okay, well, this will go to another state here, and that'll be another output. So you can stack these on top of each other, and that can help you find even more. And so if you were to draw this all out, like it would look, I'm not 
gonna draw the arrows, but like you can see like it would look something like this. And you can have multiple stacks for this kind of things. So again, RNNs are kind of like, it's, I think if it like, you like condense a neural, and it's kind of crazy is that this whole thing right here, and even like this whole thing by itself is a neural network by itself. And then basically you're feeding it through time. So it can kind of like make it pretty big and everything like that, but hopefully you kind of get the idea that um, these are pretty flexible in that way. Okay. So hopefully that sounds good to you. Um, we're only going to focus right now on the one where we basically get um, an output for each each time. So kind of like the simplest uh, RN. So um, also I know that the simple RNNs are also called Elman no networks, um, E L M A N, um, in case you come across that. But basically we're going to call it the simple RNN. So uh, I think this is a great like so these sequence of animations is a great way to explain I think. Um, how these RNNs kind of work. And so he's taking basically a sentence here, what time is it? And basically, um, I think, I'm trying to remember what he's actually trying to find. Uh, classify the intent. So like, what are you trying to say? You know, basically what from the sentence. And so he actually color codes each word. So you can see all these different colors here. And he actually will break it up into a symbolic meaning right here. So for example, um, the first one you have is what, and it goes through here and it has an output, okay? And then he does the next part for like time, for example. And you can see here, it's like, okay, well, we have our what part, we have our output here, but then that information is passed over to time. And it's this great like visual where he shows this green part, but it's also mixed in a little bit from the blue what, right? And note that this, when it passes through, it's not literally this input, it's gonna be transformed in some way um, from like the weights itself. So there's each of these arrows has weights um, that are associated with it. And so it would pass in this um, transform, you know, what uh, vector. And now we have kind of like a blue and a green one together. And what's kind of cool, he kind of shows like, well, okay, the next part you would say, all right, we're filling in this um, blue and green part, this time and what together. I want to feed it into the next word. And he shows a great example of this is that he shows that there's less and less information from that what, which kind of makes sense, hopefully, is that this what should disappear from the context itself. And you should actually see is that each time it's only half of that color going through. And you can see here kind of going part through. I thought this was a great animation. And you can see here is that little, um, the blue and eventually the green, and then eventually will be the yellow, uh, gets smaller and smaller effect within this um, further node. Okay, and so at the end of it, once we have this last output right here, that's the only output we actually care about. This will actually be your, you know, sentiment analysis, such as saying, oh, what does this actually mean? And then we can actually uh, take this part and do it, go it through a feed forward layer, which is basically like our classical neural network. Um, again, um, a feed forward network, I kind of skipped over that. A feed forward network is a not like a non recurrent neural net. So our classical ones, yeah, basically there's no extra little sequence going through here. So basically you would have this new output vector uh, right here and you pass it through your own neural network and this neural network basically should have been trained already or you know we would train this neural network um, and then say okay well eventually this should be classified as asking for the time. So you can see here is that basically the recurrent network is basically trying to get to the point where we can get some information we can pass on to do more classification on it. right? Um, and he kind of shows a little bit of, I think this uh, actually some pseudocode. No, it's actually a real one. Um, depends on, well, not the stuff we're using, but um, basically that you hear, you can see here is that we have an RNN, a feed form at the very end, and basically says for each word and the input, so you can imagine this input, right? Uh, you basically would get an output in his state for an RNN, and then we just keep feeding that over and over and over and over again, okay? And then our prediction would just be our feed forward network after that final output. So this is kind of like a little pseudocode going on here. Um, but this is essentially the same, like, same concept. If you replace RNN to basically be a real, um, you know, a real recurrent neural network that you constr uh, construct, a feed forward ne neural network, kind of like your classical, uh, you know, a multi-layer perceptron network, right? Um, and just do this from here, you'd have it. So yeah, hopefully it doesn't seem like, like it's actually, in my mind, it's so amazing that it actually works um, and like that, to be honest, like someone came up with this and be like, oh, like we can just stack these on top of each other. Um, these can get really complicated and kind of interesting and stuff. But that's the basic uh, RNN. So um, you have any questions on that? Okay, pretty cool. All right, and then, so this kind of leads us to a couple of things that the curriculum then talks about, which actually uh, this guy also um, has written about. Um, is that we have an issue with this called the vanishing gradient problem. And we mentioned this vanishing gradient problem, but the problem is it's kind of like it's um, 
it's that the stuff that had previously happened that might be important will disappear over time. So you can see here, like that was a good, great animation is this blue part right here was starting to disappear um, as we added more and more parts of the network. And this can actually be really, really um, um, like, like hurtful in a lot of ways to our model because it's kind of like in a sense like they described like the short memory problem is that basically it's that it only remembers the most recent stuff. So you imagine adding like two more layer, like two more words on here, that blue and green would be basically gone. Like it's almost like has no effect at all. And so this is the problem with like the natural gradient the problem is that a lot of times is that there's specific words that really stick out that may not really like, um, like that will affect the meaning of the whole, you know, let's say sentence or even a paragraph that you need to keep. And so this is actually a huge part where you're like, okay, like you gotta make sure like we keep this information. And this really comes down to the fact that uh, we have back propagation is that the short term memory and um, going to the vanishing gradient. And so the fact that we're doing back propagation is if our back propagation um, of our gradient is very, very small, um, it means we adjust it a little bit, that gradient will eventually disappear because we have to pass it through so many times in the past and it gets smaller and smaller and smaller to the point where it's pretty much zero and it doesn't actually change anything. But a lot of times we actually do care about those things. So there's some ways we can actually uh, fix this. And so um, we'll talk about this right up after. And I think good. he does have a little article right here, um, basically LSTMs and grooves. So LSTMs, uh, long, short term memory cell, is that right? Hmm. That's right. I feel, like I'm, I feel like I'm messing that up. But anyway, we'll, we'll talk about um, LSTMs. Oh, no, no, long, short term memory. Yeah, good. So. Um, Basically, this allows you to keep this extra information. Um, grooves are also another way of doing it. It's actually a simpler way of doing LSTMs, which surprise, I mean, I don't know if surprise is the right word, but like it does actually work pretty well. Um, this like is more state of the art than recurrent neural networks. So essentially what we'll do instead of using um, a full you know, neural network, we'll actually use an LSTM or a GRU. Um, and so wherever you saw those little blue dots right here, or like these dots right here, okay? So I think in the very beginning, right here, this this um, guy right here will essentially be replaced with an LSTM or a GRU or some other kind of structure here to um, basically help remember and also, strangely enough, also forget certain things to make sure that it proceeds forward. Um, so that's our next part. So let me go ahead and go to that article here. Um, 